Hey everybody, welcome to Indie Games Level Up. I'm your host, Phil Lubensky. I'm at the old RCA Gramophone Factory in Montreal, and inside is Compulsion Games, the makers of Contrast. We're gonna talk with them about their upcoming Big Brother, trippy survival game, We Happy Few. We Happy Few is a first-person survival roguelike. It's in an alternate history version of 1960s England. It has a retro-futuristic feel, and its happy pill-popping citizens are gonna give you the creeps, make any false moves, and they'll beat you to a pulp. By conforming to the rules and hiding in plain sight, your goal is to escape a city on the brink of social collapse. With beautiful design and a dash of paranoia, We Happy Few is both intriguing and wonderfully creepy. Now I'm gonna go talk to the founder of Compulsion Games, Guillaume Provo. What made you want to found your own indie game studio? I've done a lot of different types of jobs. Uh, that's that's the truth. I was a, a programmer, a producer, a technical artist. I was always a little bit of a pirate at heart. And of course, the natural thing happened, which is like I had a little bit of a pet project that I was running on, and I was kind of curious. And I said, okay, well, after a while, when you do consulting, you're like you want to build something that has a tangible value that you can keep. The first you know person I needed to feel to sort of compliment the. A role. My, my, my expertise in the company was, was someone who knew how to draw. So I found um, this uh, young and aspiring concept artist and she would make drawings that would inspire like an art direction for the game that we were going to build. And, and then slowly over time we took on contracts together, we took on bigger projects together and we were able to start raising capital and slowly growing the team. And then, uh, we don't have any publishers, marketing, anyone. We are, in fact, we don't have anyone outside the company that influences the type of games that we make. Okay. Uh, so at, a, at, a, at its core essence, that's, that's, a, that's one of the things that allows us to create, take risks if we want to, but we're basically taking the decisions together. I think that's where you, you spark creative uniqueness in, in a project. I think one of the things that we've been very, very fortunate about in the studio is we, we've been able to attract very, very different people. We have a, a bunch of different nationalities on the team, but also a bunch of different creative people who have different creative tastes. It makes managing the, 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 the creative process of making a game uh, a little bit like running an insane asylum uh, sometimes. <laughs> it creates a discussion amongst the different people who are responsible for the different elements of the game that is uh, really important to making something that um, is both unique but also has like that potential to appeal to a larger audience. The first game we made, I wanted to make a personal statement. It was a personal project. It, for me, it was really a, a way for me to express you know, things that I had you know, deep down inside of me. And my eldest daughter came into uh, the studio. And uh, on a contrast, we have a little girl, which is the same age as uh, yes. she is. Uh, and for her, obviously, it was a very uh, uh, interesting experience for her to see uh, me actually craft uh, a game centered around a uh, little girl who was living, you know, obviously very difficult personal familial moments, which was a very current um, personal life situation at the time as well. I think for our second project, We Happy Few, is more about the, uh, um, the creative blooming of the studio. It's another fabulous day in Wellington Wells. The weather is only slightly rainy with streaks of lovely sunshine. Everyone in Wellington Wells is doing exactly what he or she ought to. What about you? We wanted to build something that was darker than in contrast, uh, and we wanted to touch more mature themes in this game. The mood of the game uh, is clearly very instrumentally set by our art director, uh, Whitney. She brings in the first pictures and the first depiction of the game, uh, and that really helps set the tone, the visual tone of the game. We talked about the idea of creating a procedurally generated city, but not just making it like a bland, like block visual thing, but actually creating a procedural city that had panache and flair and a certain artistry to it. But the happy creepy, uh, like the happy creepy juxtaposition, I think really came from one, first of all, the, the development of the narrative lore in the game. Uh, where we got to the stage where we're like, okay, well, these people are kept up, they're all really, really happy, but we want to make something dark. So there was a natural opposition that came through. When we first uh, did the casting for this crazy film, you know, character that we wanted to put on all the TVs, the performance that Uncle Jack 
uh, uh, Julia made really helped inform a lot of the rest of the mood that we, we built into the game afterwards. And that was a peek at the exciting new game, We Happy Few. And we actually based the character for Uncle Jack on uh, a show from Monty Python called Blackmail. They have this crazy guy that answers the telephone and blackmails citizens uh, into doing things. Let's talk drugs. Sure. Um, okay. <laughs> I find it's interesting and hilarious that uh, that everybody in the game is a little high. At the end of the day, it's 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 you know looking at the psychological pattern of the people that are there. Uh, they've taken chemicals to forget the past and live a happy life, and it's a life of deniability over the very dire circumstances that they find themselves in when you start playing. I felt that's something that strikes everyone's soul. Like we all have that tiny thing in the back of our brains that we're kind of willfully ignoring even though we should be dealing with it. You as a player who are not on your drugs obviously are the one cognizant people, that person that is aware of these problems and you're discovering you know, the history of the city throughout. Obviously as a player you can experience the drug and when you do things, you know, the sky becomes blue, you know, you get you know, night, that nice little butterfly, you know, happy moment, you know, where you're experiencing the state of euphoria that the uh, people in the city are experiencing. But there's also a very a significant uh, consequence to taking drugs in the game, which is that you will either overdose if you take too much of it, uh, or you'll come down crashing after a certain time. And both of those have negative impacts on the game. Uh, having a game that touched on how you look and how you act and looks at every player action that you do within the game and has those reflected by how the different inhabitants will react to what you do was a core component that we wanted to develop in the game. Some inhabitants won't care if you run around, others will find it very suspicious. It's, it's, one of the, it's part of the learning process for the player to understand what the rules of the society are in different areas of the city. Guillaume, thank you so much for this interview. No problem. And for everybody at home, if you want to know more about the game, go to www.wehappyfewgame.com. Indie Games Level Up is produced by Handmade. Handmade creates compelling live action and animation, including video game trailers, commercials, and this web series. To find out more, visit handmadecreative.ca. This episode is sponsored by the Canada Media Fund. Since 2010, they've invested over $50 million in Canadian indie game studios. The Canada Media Fund is proud to help indie games level up, explore innovation and creativity in indie games. 